Of course, now we have to generate the gradient background for the main section of the HTML document. And we're going to use this ColorZilla website to simplify that process. Now, this gradient is a little bit different than the last gradient that we created. The last gradient we created had two stops within the gradient. This gradient is a little bit more complicated, and it's going to use three stops. Still not a big deal, but we're going to need to generate a little bit more CSS to reproduce that gradient. So come over to the ColorZilla website and click on the Ultimate Gradient Generator. Once you come into the generator, what we want to do is remove this second stop here in the center. So we have the three stops that we want to modify. And that's all we have to do really is just modify these stops now. And the best way to do that is to select this first stop and click on the color well here. And we're going to plug in some numbers. We're going to come over to the RGB section and we're going to add some RGB values. The red channel is going to be 92. The green channel is going to be 168. And the blue channel is going to be 186. That's for the first stop. You can go ahead and click OK here to exit out of this dialog box. You can then come over and select the middle stop. Click on the little color well here. And inside this dialog box, we want to plug in RGB values again. So for the red channel, we're going to type in 223. For the green channel, we're going to type in 246. And for the blue channel, we're going to type in 234. Then you can go ahead and click OK. Then you can click on the last stop here, click on the inkwell to open up this little dialog box, and we're going to mix red, green, and blue values again. This time we're going to go to pure white, which would be 255 for red, 255 for green, and 255 for blue. Then you can go ahead and click OK. Then we want to set where these stoppers land. And so right now we have this one set to 0% for its location, which is what we want. The white stopper is set to 100%, which is what we want. But then we want to select the middle stopper. And the middle stopper, we want to position that at 55%. So go ahead and change the location. And when you do, you can see that all the code is updated here. You'll also notice that we have a solid background color of 92, 168, 186, just in case a browser can't render out this gradient. So what we want to do now is copy this code. So come down here in the bottom right-hand corner and click the Copy button. Once you copy it, it's stored to the clipboard. You can then come back over to your editor. And inside of your editor, in my case it's Dreamweaver, come over to style.css and we're going to create a new selector. We're going to create a new selector called page. So go ahead and type in pound page. Open up a curly brace and close it. Then you can come in and paste the code. After pasting the code, you can select all of it and tab it over so it's a little bit easier to read. I just want to make sure I still have that closing bracket down here. I do. And like I said earlier when we were working with the gradients, this filter is a little buggy. It's not all that useful. At least that's what I find. You can keep it in here if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and remove it. After setting up this rule, you can save the style sheet file, Control S or Command S on the Macintosh. Then you can come up to index.html. And what we want to do is preview this in our web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and preview it in Chrome. And once you preview it, you should see the gradient. We don't. So let's just come back to our editors and see what the problem is. We do have the ID here of page. Oh, of course, we don't have any content inside this container. So we would have to add content in order for us to see it. But we'd have to add quite a bit of content. So if you want, you can add a couple different break elements in here to separate out some space. So just go ahead and copy and paste this a few times. And after doing that, you can save the document. You can come back to the browser. And then you can refresh it. And when you refresh it, you begin to see that gradient. So we know that it's working. Obviously, we don't want all those breaks inside that div element. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove them. I just added that temporarily so we could verify that the gradient was, in fact, in place. If we return back to Photoshop, if we take a look at this document, we go ahead and turn off extras. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If we look at the page section, we can see that we have some borders here. We have a dark bar across the top. And what we want to do in the next movie is take a look at how we can reproduce that dividing bar that we're seeing here inside of Photoshop.